administrator in that name unit, and he got uh, he got a similar access map on the right. Uh, a lot of circles, a lot of resources, a lot of um, you know uh, services that's allowed. So this administrator group, right? Makes sense. You know, it's so powerful. It has so much privilege. It makes total sense. That's very and interestingly, it turns out it's not the case. So if we look at you know the uh, solution and the recommendations here, uh, we got one recommendations. This is remove the permissions that are not used in over ninety days. So let's take a look at the same details. You will uh, you will provide uh, so you will provide a long list of the permissions um, grouped by the services. You know, it's very granular. Um, on AWS, we are talking about more than seven thousand of permissions. So, if we want to, you know, do it manually, it can't be possible. So, how can we fix it? That's um, it's very simple. Let's just click on the create fix button, and we need to do two things, right? As you struck on the screen, the first is create a new inline policy that you know with the attached JSON. So, let's copy. Um, the policy and try to attach it to the policy. So we click on this link and Cloud and Tesla Manager will bring you for us directly to the page to configure that inline policy. Right? And here you can see inline policy. We don't have any right now, so let's create one by clicking this link. So typically, uh, administrator or you know, um, cloud operators will use the uh, policy generator to select the uh, your Preferred. You can select uh, the AWS services here, yeah, very right. long list, and in these services, uh, we can pick the app. Again, very long list, uh, you know, for for many services. So it's kind of difficult and impossible to make a granular policy you know, based on this approach. Uh, so let's go ahead and explain. Yeah, instead of you know clicking and selecting those uh, permissions manually, we can create custom policy. Simply place um, the generated uh, policy, um, which generated by the CEM, Cloud Entities Manager, and we can give it a name like so, and we can attach the policy. Okay, that's complete the first step. So let's go back to um, CEM and do the second recommendation, which is remove the policy from the group. Okay, we are talking about administrator access policy. Go back to AWS. And you see the policy is right here. So we can simply click the attach policy button. Detach it. And now it's done. So um, this is how we can you know, quick fix um, a policy, um, the permission uh, over permissions in error for this uh, particular group. So that's mark is as fix. So Cloud Entitled Manager will regularly scan um, and analyze uh, the car platform. But for demonstration purpose, let me manually trigger it. So, so under platform management, uh, I can see that I can uh, and start a scan. We'll come back in a moment and we will this group and see what changes Cloud Entitlement Manager made. So let's continue to our slides. So the first benefit is, of, of course, um, uh, enabling this privilege. This privilege allows organizations to move forward in their digital transformation and confidently adopt advanced services from various providers. As you can see in the demonstration, AI power recommendation ensure all permissions are revealed while taking the guesswork out of the crafting of new policy that supports this privilege. And as UI come into place, organizations can easily and continuously monitor the risk at the platform, environment or identity level to Verify this privilege. Well, there are, there are operational benefits to the, uh, by the solutions as well. First, exposure level analysis provides detailed insight on the target platform, permission type, and additional risk factor in all the individual permissions. That helps organizations to see um, which uh, where the greatest source of risk are, and on the top recommendations to make the, list, the fastest path to risk reduction. Exposure level scores also provide codified historical analysis of risk over time for each environment and platform, providing clarity 
when it comes to our eyes and reporting. Finally, uh, the list prefix is the key elements to many regulations and industrial framework. The car internal register is the latest step, the latest step in our identity uh, security portfolio, anchored in our privilege. We focus on security or securing all identities, including human, machine, and remote factor, and all previous pathways to sensitive workloads. Cup and titles managers bring from our PM solutions for extending latest privilege across cloud environment. With simple, consistent, controlled, and in the cloud, we also offer our capability for securing access to cloud management console, securing cloud infrastructure, and securing cloud native applications and DevOps pipelines as well. Now, uh, Here's some good news to everyone here who joined this section. Uh, Account and Title Manager is now available as a simple and easy to use free trial. You can sign up and connect to your cloud accounts in under five minutes. And within an hour, uh, utilize the AI powered recommendations specifically to your unique environment. The solution requires no existing cyber license, no professional service, or expertise to set it up. You can register for the free trial using the link or scanning the QR code on the screen. We'll share them um, during Q&A sessions um, again. So let's quickly go back to our environment and see what happens to our, you know, the group. So if we go back um, to the uh, dashboard, like so, let me pick my account. Sorry, but let's do it again. We will all. And if we search for admins, you can see here the exposure level drop from 90, over 90% 90 uh, to zero right now. So we click on it. You can see the exposure over time drop significantly. Access map is way simpler and the exposure level is very low. If we go back to the our recommendation again, you can see here it's secured. Um, we don't have additional recommendation for you and our drop it, uh, here is done. So let's close um, with the last word on why we can be a trusted partner and take care of this challenge. This issue of accessing permission is fundamentally an issue of this previous access. It's a problem best solved at identity level. And for that, you can trust Sabarak above anyone else. Cloud identity managers provide a rapid, safe, and consistent solution for all cloud identities. Yeah. It's an easy to use uh, power solution that provides uh, uh, time and uh, value uh, and doesn't require uh, any uh, in account uh, estate. Uh, From the expert uh, of uh, over 6,000 customer trust uh, to implement this privilege across uh, their endpoints, servers, cloud workloads, and applications in complicated environments. That's pretty much it. I believe now is the time for question and answer. Is there any questions? Um, yeah, uh, hi, Hansi. Uh, hi. So, thank you so much for that uh, very interesting and insightful presentation. Uh, I see that we have received a few questions for you. Uh, yep. The first one is how CEM is licensed? Oh, so CEM is licensed um, based on the workspace, meaning that, you know, on AWS, it will be AWS account. Uh, the number of um, GCP projects or for Azure, it will be uh, the directory um, that we connect and, and you know, scan to. So um, it's based on the number of workspaces. Okay. 
Uh, the second question is, is there any limitations in the 30 days trial? Oh, the, during the 30 days trial, that's uh, unlimited, meaning that you can connect to, you know, uh, any number of cover space if you want. You, you can connect to any, you know, ETS, a Custer or AWS or TCP or Azure uh, as much as you want. Uh, I'm just going to take one more question. We have a lot of questions, but I think we can uh, take one more. That sure. is, what will happen to the trial tenant if we'd like to process to get some licenses, but our procurement process takes longer than remaining days? Uh, okay, so so I'm glad you know um, some of you are interested in the product. So um, you know, if your procurement process takes longer by default. You know, all the data in the cloud entitlements manager will be retained on the cloud, but you know, others can, can scan it. But I strongly recommend, um, you know, um, those who face these situations to reach out to our cyber representative, and we can see what we can do. All right. So thank you so much, Quincy. Uh, that was a very insightful presentation, and we thank CyberArk for being the diamond sponsor for Cyber Twenty Twenty Live Thank you so much. Thank you, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'm sorry about the glitch uh, that we have earlier. Thanks very much. Oh, our apologies. So sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> have a nice one, everyone. So, um, yeah. So, uh, I would like to tell you all a little bit about the reward points that you can collect over the course of two days. Please ensure that you watch all the sessions and visit the exhibiting area in order to collect more points. Uh, click on the rewards tab located in the lobby area for more information. But let's first continue to view some more interesting knowledge sharing sessions. Uh, the next presentation is on the topic Conquering the Cyber Security Challenges of the Cloud. Checkpoint Software Technologies is a leading provider of cyber security solutions to corporate enterprises and governments globally. Its solutions protect customers from fifth generation cyber attacks with an industry-leading catch rate of malware, ransomware, and over-targeted attacks. Checkpoint offers a multi-level security architecture with, our, with their new Gen B advanced threat prevention that protects all networks, cloud, and mobile operators of a business against all known attacks combined with the industry's most comprehensive and intuitive single point of control management system. Checkpoint protects over 100,000 organizations of all sizes. I welcome Gary Gardiner, uh, Head of Security Engineering ATAC, Checkpoint Software, to share his insights on this interesting topic. Hi there, hopefully all of you can see me and see the presentation. This is excellent. I'm getting a nod, which is good. Here we go. Okay. It's a real pleasure to be here today. Thank you very much for your time um, and your attention. Uh, we're going to talk about security challenges in the cloud, which is a, it's a large subject to go through in just 30 minutes. So I'm going to touch on a few key aspects of what you should be doing inside the cloud. The checkpoint is part of what it does on, uh, on a daily and yearly basis. If I can get the slide to progress. There we go. Um, we actually went out and looked at a report. We wanted to understand from the customers that we see and some of the organizations that are not our customers where they see cloud security. Now, as we all know with this year, there has been a, a marked change in organizations' adoption to the cloud because of COVID-19. We've seen a lot of organizations accelerate the digital transformation and the cloud migration projects simply because they had to to maintain business because not, a, not everyone was allowed into the office. Checkpoint was exactly the same in this situation. As an example, we are not allowed, well, we weren't allowed up until this year to access source code from outside of our head office. That now has changed, but we've gone through our own digital transformation to allow that to happen. So as you can see here from the survey, uh, we looked at 653 cybersecurity professionals, and we surveyed them at mid-year, so part, pretty much at the height of the, of the pandemic was starting. Um, and we looked at organizations over a thousand employees or greater, for the majority of it, we focused on IT, security, and SecOps to give you an idea. So what I want to go through is just briefly give you an idea of what the findings were that we saw. And what we saw is that 59% of organizations are going to increase their cloud security budget over the next 12 months. And on average, 
organizations are dedicating around 27% of their overall IT budget to cloud security. But we're also seeing here that they're deploying not just to one single cloud vendor, they're, they're spreading the load across multiple security, or sorry, multiple cloud vendors, whether that's infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, workloads, or software as a service. So it's not just specifically about one cloud vendor. And we're seeing them using a lot more than just two. Now we asked what cloud vendor, vendors you can see, and as you can see here on the screen, you would expect AWS and Azure to be the top two. This was just specifically around infrastructure as a service. Now as you can see, Amazon Web Services is leading the list, uh, but some of the interesting points is the growth of Azure was 65% in 2019, it's now up to 69% in 2020, and also Google went from 37 to 48%, and Oracle is also growing as well. So we are seeing a growth of the services moving forward. Now, we did ask about their understanding of the risks in the cloud. And what we're seeing here is around 52% um, believe that security breaches in public cloud environments are higher than the traditional on-premise. And only 17% are seeing it as a lower risk if you actually go to the cloud. Now this is what we would expect to see. Um, but again, a lot of people don't understand the risks of actually going to the cloud. They, they believe there is a risk, but they don't understand fundamentally what those risks are. Now we also asked them, what are the barriers, what do they see as the main issues of moving services to the cloud? And interestingly enough, um, our survey revealed that the biggest challenge is not the technology, but actually the people and the processes. Um, so there is obviously an understanding that cloud workloads, if you're looking at um, Kubernetes or containers, it is a change in the way that things happen. And a lot of the time we're seeing cloud migrations being pushed by DevOps and not by the organization itself. And then obviously budget challenges, and then quite lowly, quite low down data privacy. Um, we'll talk a little bit further on in the presentation around data privacy inside the cloud, but it is something that should be a lot higher around um, the concerns that organizations have. And then we spoke about traditional security tools, cloud security tools. And we asked them, how well do your traditional network security tools, appliances work in the cloud environment? And as you can see here, there was a, an understanding or a belief that traditional security solutions don't work all the time and have limited fun functionality. Now from a Checkpoint perspective, that's not true. Checkpoint was founded as a software company. We have been supporting cloud environments for a very long time inside private clouds and also inside public clouds. So we see that, we should see that number coming down, especially if customers are using Checkpoint security tools. A Checkpoint gateway that sits inside your network environment, inside your data center is exactly the same as what sits inside AWS or Azure. So we have that functionality. But again, we're seeing a high number of people saying that they don't work or they have limited functionality, which is something that we need to address. Because what they're doing is not implementing the security technology because they don't feel it works properly. So then we looked at the top concerns. Now data loss or leakage was at 69% and data privacy and confidentiality was at 66%. Now we are seeing, when we look at Checkpoint does its research, especially around vulnerabilities, that we are seeing data loss and data leakage increasing inside the cloud because more data is moving into the cloud, but also it's all around misconfiguration and the capabilities of organizations to configure their cloud security platforms correctly when they're moving into it. And we'll talk about the key mistakes that people make when they're moving into the cloud and how we should go about rectifying those. So I just wanted to briefly touch the, the start of this around, as I talked to you about all of these issues and, and problems that people are raising right now as part of what they see in the cloud. It's where Checkpoint fits in. It will frame the rest of the discussion when we talk about the ways that organizations are moving to the cloud and also how they're actually gaining or moving their security services to the cloud. So as you can see here, Checkpoint has a suite of products called CloudGuard and that makes up several aspects of what we do. So we have what you consider your traditional security services, so your public and private cloud network security. But most key and most important now is what we're seeing and Gartner is actually reflecting this recently is that they are looking at cloud security posture management 
Now, the reason why one of the, this is key is that a lot of organizations are moving to the cloud, but don't understand what's actually happening in the cloud. When you have your data center, when you have all of those services in your data center, and you've had those for years, you have change management, you have a secure and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, mature change management process around your data center. We don't have that in the cloud because it's very agile. We need it to be agile because that's what DevOps are looking for. But then we also have to look at workload and protection. So containers and serverless, because this is where a lot of services are moving to now around that agility that I was just talking about. And the key aspects of looking at that in runtime and making sure that it's secure. If you have a look at someone like Netflix, Netflix does over 50 plus code changes per day. Now think about that if you are looking at that from a legacy security perspective. That's just never going to function. And Netflix needs that to function. They need that capability as an example. Now we look at web app and API protection because we're seeing a lot now of, and when we talk to the cloud, a lot of the API calls are coming from different services and workloads and serverless, but also in servers. And we need to be able to make sure that those APIs um, are secure. And tying into all of that is looking at the cloud holistically, whether it's multi-cloud. So we don't care which cloud service you're running on. We take all of that information and put it together. And we look at it from a cloud intelligence and threat hunting capability to identify if someone is in your cloud environment, what they're doing, and shut it down as quickly as possible. Now, back in 2015, Gartner came out with this statement. By around 2020, 95, well, cloud security failures will be the customer's fault. Gartner updated this in 2019 and says by the 2025, it's going to be 99% of cloud security failures will be the customer's fault. And we see this. We see this with a lot of misconfiguration. And it's not done maliciously. It's just done because there's a lack of understanding of how cloud environments should be secured. And it's very easy to run up a database server and give it internet access. And it's not the cloud security vendor's fault because of that. It's just they're making it easy as possible for you to consume their services. So we looked at the top security threats of 2020, and as I just mentioned, misconfiguration of the cloud platform or the wrong setup is out there. Unauthorized access, again, the capability to be able to get access to services, and we see this a lot around software as a services, software, software as a service, and as I mentioned before, secure interface, insecure interfaces by APIs. So again, we are seeing this, that it's human error is the prime key to doing this. Now, I did talk about briefly with the, the security models that the public cloud services have. So if you look at AWS, and this is what we call the shared responsibility model. The cloud vendor looks at the responsibility of the cloud itself, making sure that if you are using software as a service, that it's secure. But if you're using platform as a service, Pretty much everything above that line is your responsibility. And a lot of people don't understand that. They still think that the cloud security providers, because they're large organizations, will provide a certain level of security. Now, if you look at someone like AWS, they have over 30 security configurations you can make for storage, as an example. That's an awful lot. So it can be misconfigured. But what they do, well, up until two years ago, an AWS storage bucket was opened by default to the internet. You had to choose to close it down. That's now being changed. That's the opposite. And that's the way it should be. It should be the least privileged. But we have seen this quite a lot where even when we look at our cloud security posture management, we actually went to a cloud vendor and said, actually, no, your configurations, we've done an analysis and your standard security profiles for this are not right. You need to change these. And they did so. So we work with the cloud security vendors to make sure they're secure. I'll quickly go through, through these because we're almost halfway through the presentation. We've still got a lot to cover. But here's the AWS security shared responsibility model. Here's what we see from Microsoft, from Azure. And as you can see, data security is always yours. It's nothing to do with the cloud vendors whatsoever. It's always your responsibility. And what we've seen is a dramatic evolution of where it is a customer's responsibility and where it is the cloud provider's responsibility. Because we are seeing when we go from on-premise all the way through to containers and serverless, that changes and the evolution of the cloud has changed. And a lot of people are still stagnant thinking about it, maybe just from an on-premise or a data center housing capability. So we need to, we need to be able to address that. We need to be able to provide security 
and an agile and at the speed that the cloud wants to be developed in. So again, we asked around the key capabilities of what people want to see inside the cloud and what they're predominantly looking for is access control, um, antivirus, anti-malware, which is what you would expect to see in your data center and multi-factor authentication. So we need to bring all of those together. And the key considerations that we asked for, we asked the organizations as they're saying that, what they consider most important when evaluating cloud security solutions are product features, then the cost, and then the vendor experience. Organizations reckon, recognize several advantages of deploying cloud-based security solutions, including the faster time to deploy, they want it to be cost-effective, but they also want to reduce the efforts and the capabilities around patching and software updates. So again, they want that quick cloud environment that they have for their servers and the data, they want to see that for their, for their security as well. So as we talked about, with the cloud, we see misconfiguration as being the key. We see there's an understanding gap between what the cloud service providers provide and what the end user should be doing. We are seeing now vulnerabilities inside some of the cloud-based infrastructures. We also saw that there was a Kubernetes, um, the orchestration platform, was exposed, it had an exposed dashboard. We are seeing things like GitHub, um, having malware implemented into it, so people are using code that already has malware into it and providing that and actually executing that in the cloud. So there is a real need for us not just to look at a firewall now, but actually look at the security of the workloads and containers that are going in there. Now the good thing is, even if you're a small organization, the big guys still get it wrong. Um, in 2019, all of these organizations suffered a cloud being breach. Capital One had a misconfigured VPN, which cost about 50 million in USD to them in fines. Docker Hub had images possibly tampered with, and 190,000 accounts were exposed to hackers. And then Facebook was um, had 540 million um, user info stolen due to a misconfiguration of an S3 bucket. Not being fair on Facebook, that was actually a third party that had that information. But again, the dish still shows you that you have to be aware of where this information is going and who you're sharing it with. Office 365 is another key area that we have seen within Checkpoint. We have our own incident response team and we are getting more and more calls around Office 365. The reason why. What we are doing now with software as a service is we are now exposing Usernames and passwords to an internet platform that we would normally have behind a VPN or multi-factor authentication. And a lot of people are still not using two-factor authentication for things like Office 365. And the bad guys are now doing what we tell as account takeover. They're gaining access to things like Office 365 and then just creating rules inside there and sending all of the emails to themselves, but still having that account and that capability access that account. They're then using that to do internal phishing attacks inside the organization. And we've seen millions upon millions of dollars being lost through organizations through these, through these kind of attacks. Now, how do we go about securing it? And with your cloud transformation, if you're already starting it or if you're going through it, the process of starting it, I want to throw a little bit of an analogy here. And we're going to go make it simple. So what can we learn from the three little pigs? So as we all know from the fairy tale, um, they built their houses out of straws and sticks. Now what we see is that a lot of organizations who build a cloud security strategy of deployment out of these building materials will suffer from a breach and it will, it, will, it will happen very quickly. The bad guys are out there monitoring. So one of the key things that we always say to our customers is plan properly. If you can, consult with a trusted cloud security provider. You can consult with the cloud providers themselves. They now have some good blueprints that you can use, but benefit from industry best practices. Don't just go into it very quickly. Unfortunately, we are now speaking to a lot of customers through the, through the COVID area, era who went in very quickly, and we're now, still, we're now helping them readdress some of the mistakes that were made as part of the deployments, but we, we're, we want to have those conversations. And don't look at it just as a lift and shift. Sometimes when we speak to a lot of customers, we, they go, well, we need this application in the cloud. We've said that that application is not designed to work in the cloud. And if you move it to the cloud, you're going to have so many more problems running it in the cloud than you do actually on-premise. So they have a decision to make as to whether it stays on-premise 
or then they do a re-architecture of that, that entire application so that it does fit inside the cloud. Not everything is cloud ready right away. You have to think about it when you're doing this. So you wait for it to blow down and then you run away. Then it's already too late to fix the problem. You will suffer some financial loss, reputation loss, and checkpoints. Mantra when it comes to security, and it has been since the start, is prevention is the only option. So detecting an exposure is too risky, especially in the cloud, because the agile nature of it, they can quite very quickly do a lot of damage to your organization. It's a lot more difficult for them to do inside your data center than inside the cloud because they can start running up services that you don't know have been run up and then start using that against you. Is a brick wall enough? No, as we know. Um, on premises, it was easier to protect. You had your internet connectivity, there was things coming in. Yes, you had remote access. But in the cloud, each service, each access role, each workload can create new parameters, new access ways, if they're misconfigured, for, or for the bad guys to get into your organization. So we need to look at it around that security posture management. We need to understand exactly what's going on. So changing tack a little bit. How, do we, how can we know, how can we learn from Snow White? Well, in the, the parable, fairy tale, the Wicked Queen could see everything. She had the mirror that could tell her what was going on. And it's exactly the same as in your data center in the cloud. Visibility is everything. If you don't know what's happening, you can't secure it because you can't see it. So again, as we talked about with security posture management, what you need is the capability to understand what's going on in real time because workloads are created and torn down very quickly. Services are created because people have access to do this. Your DevOps, your DevSecOps, all of these people have access to do it. Code is being changed dynamically all the time inside the cloud. So you need something that's broad, well integrated across all of this. It has to be a security solution that helps eliminate the blind spots that you have. Because if you don't see it, as I mentioned, you don't know that it's happening. And that's the main problem. Changing tack again, Hansel and Gretel. Will your safe path home endure? So unlike Hansel and Gretel who left the trail of breadcrumbs to find their way home, what they didn't expect is it would be eaten by birds. And what we've learned from the coronavirus crisis is expect the unexpected. A disaster can, recover, disaster can happen very quickly and you have to be able to have disaster recovery and this is the new normal. We have seen it now, a lot of people have moved to cloud services very quickly. And Little Red Riding Hood. It looks like grandma, sounds like grandma, so it must be grandma. A lot of organizations are implementing zero trust. I've been speaking about it for about a decade. It was Forrester who recently, and Gartner who recently took it to the next level um, about two or three years ago and actually started the zero trust conversation in earnest. But again, we have to a certain extent, and organizations have to a certain extent, zero trust inside their networks, their data center networks, but they don't have it with their cloud. So what we need to do is look at the networks, the people, the devices, the data, and the workloads to make sure that they are secure, they are who they say they are, and adopt a secure zero trust model across your private and public clouds. This is key. So what you're doing inside your data center has to be moved to the cloud. Now, what do we learn from Cinderella? The wrong foot won't fit the slipper. So 82, as I mentioned at the start, 82% of people we surveyed believed that traditional security solutions do not work at all or have limited functionality in the cloud. What we know is that with this, was Cinderella's foot was the only one that would fit the shoe. Similarly, similarly, your solution should fit and should use cloud native solutions to secure your cloud deployments. Instead of taking a traditional security solution that may have been retrofitted and often will not match the dynamic and scalable nature of the computing and cloud services. This is what Checkpoint has done. So what we want to be able to provide you and what we have been able to provide is cloud services that are scalable, that are dynamic and agile. They are not being retrofitted. As I mentioned before, we are a security software company. 
we have had this capability, whether it's running our own virtual firewalls or running inside private clouds, for over a decade. We have the capability to do this. We have the capability to meet the needs of what's happening there. But what can we learn from Sleeping Beauty? Well, if you keep your eyes closed and you slow down, you're going to fall behind. You need to keep your eye on the ball. What we have seen very dramatically in the last two to three years is the move not just from platform and infrastructure as a service, but to secure containers and serverless. A lot of organizations have been using these services for a long time. And we need to make sure, as I mentioned before, that we have fully integrated workload and API protections in place. The bad guys are now using this. They know how to use this and they are attacking clouds daily trying to get into the APIs or trying to see if they can embed code into things like GitHub that will be used inside your organization to help them gain access into your services. And from the Sorcerer's Apprentice, as you, I don't know if you remember the film, but you know, Mickey Mouse lost control of everything that was going in the room because there was too much going on. What we need is to have a solution that looks at the entirety of your cloud-based infrastructure multi-cloud-based infrastructure and consolidate that into a single security platform. Therefore, what it does is it reduces the complexity, it reduces the integration overheads that you get. You don't have to have as many trained staff and your maintenance overheads go down. You know, so what we're doing is when you look at it, we would strongly recommend evaluating security solutions that can cover a broad range of the services and capabilities that you expect to see in the cloud. Just about there, I think I'm just about on time. So you can download the report from Checkpoint um, today. You can also get a free demo and assessment. Not the best URL on the planet, but feel free to talk to one of your Checkpoint representatives, one of your Checkpoint partners, and we can come and have a discussion. We can have that architectural question around what you're doing inside the cloud. As I mentioned before, just to reiterate it, you need to have a solution that's covering everything. Checkpoint has been in business since 1994. We have and are the leading security vendor in the data center and now in the cloud. We have the capabilities to do this. At the center of everything is our threat cloud. This is a huge database of security vulnerabilities we've discovered, zero day vulnerabilities and what our research team do. And this is integrated into everything that we do. So all of the services that you see up here around security for firewalling, cloud security posture management, workload and serverless protections, API protection, all comes into the threat cloud intelligence and the threat hunting that we do. So what next? As I mentioned, you can come and have a conversation or we can come and have a conversation with you virtually nowadays, but we can have a session where we can look at giving you a demo, we can get you in front of one of our cloud security architects. We can start a free cloud guard trial the Dome 9 trial is so easy if you've got AWS or Azure or Google. All we need is read-only access into your environment, and within about an hour, we will tell you if you have misconfigurations inside your cloud network. And we we will find those misconfigurations. It will just it will light up like a Christmas tree. So maybe if you do it in December, you can light it up like a Christmas tree. Um, we will provide you with a report around your cloud security posture, and we will provide you an assessment on that. And as you see there, you can learn more about it at cloud.checkpoint.com. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much for your time today. It was a real pleasure to um, join this virtual conference and present to you. Thank you. Oh, wow, Gary, that was a very nice presentation. It was insightful, it was fun. I mean, it was just great just listening to your presentation. So thank you so much, uh, you know, connecting Disney characters to uh, the current scenario and the importance. It's just, just great. So thank you, Gary. I'm sure our audience also enjoyed your presentation. Uh, we have uh, one question for you. Uh, in cloud security issue, how to mitigate the security incident, for example, theft of data hosted in cloud infrastructure by malicious actor? Okay, that's a, yeah, I'll try and answer that quickly. Um, so within Checkpoint, we, we've got the technology now, as I mentioned, around security posture management to automate the misconfiguration. So we can say, okay, you've created a connection from a data store to the internet. 
that's wrong, we can automate the response to that. So we can say, well, you shouldn't do that based on security policies, we'll make the changes. We're now looking at the capabilities to, it, we do integrate with SOCs, we, we have our capability to integrate with SOC and identify that. The easiest thing, and this has happened even with a lot of the cloud security breaches, is encrypt the data at rest. I know it's, it seems, you know, going through this whole process again, but it's if it's going to be stolen, please make sure it's encrypted. It's exactly the same with, like, with eBay and Facebook when they had their data stolen. Passwords were encrypted, but they just said change your password just in case. So making sure that it's encrypted at rest, but also having a good security posture management platform that can look at the connectivity between the applications, looking at the API calls to make sure they're legitimate. And again, if you are at the stage of your cloud migration where you are using workloads and containers, making sure that the code is secure. Checkpoint, we actually analyze the code at runtime to see whether or not it's actually doing something malicious, or we look for common things like hard-coded passwords inside the code that do exist, believe it or not. That is that is all a pathway for the, the threat actors to gain access. And once they're in there, they will hide their tracks as best as possible, because the longer they're in there, the more chance they have of stealing it down. So, there you go. Okay. Thank you so much, Gary, and uh, thank you, Techpoint, uh, for being the code sponsors for SMP 2020. If you all have any more questions for Gary, you can visit the Checkpoint booth during the networking sessions, and you can also have a one to one discussion with the team. So, thank you, Gary. My pleasure. Thank you. The next presentation is on the topic Zero Trust Security and Threat Hunting in the Multi-Cloud Environment. Splunk was founded to pursue a disruptive new vision, uh, make machine data accessible, usable and valuable to everyone. Organizations use market lending Splunk solutions with machine learning to monitor, act on all forms of business, IT, security and Internet of Things data. Use Splunk software in the cloud and on-premises to improve service levels, reduce operations, uh, operation cost, mitigate security risks, enable compliance, enhance DevOps collaboration, and create new product and service offerings. I welcome Paul Pang, Principal Security Strategist, APAC and Japan, from Splunk to present this interesting topic. sessions. Uh, my name is Paul Peng, the Zero Trust Security, and also how can we do the threat hunting in the multi cloud environment. So uh, in the coming 25 minutes, I'm going to share with you the basic concept of Zero Trust, and also what is the consideration when we do the threat hunting in the latest multi cloud world. Before I start, um, I want to share a little bit about, um, as you can see, um, Public cloud is just another area that's a lot of the hacker. Recently, very interested to hack you. So, cloud is safe, but again, if in case the hacker can get your admin account, they can also do a lot of backing on it. So that's why we see continuously a lot of the different attack based on maybe phishing, based on the password guessing, based on the malware. And this is actually very common, if you read a lot of the adversary report, you will see that all of this is actually happening. Besides the public cloud, you may say, oh, okay, maybe yeah, my company is not using that. But recently, because of the COVID-19, a lot of the user, because they cannot back to your office, so you allow them to work remotely. So that's why actually it is not the IT team decision you still may involve some of this kind of the public cloud or remote access to the environment. Another outcome is you now have a new type of the security challenge to handle. For example, this is a different type of the new type of the cybercrime. And based on the cybercrime report, actually, we can predict there is more than 3 trillion for next year. And again, the 
because we already have a very good, safe uh, premises of security environment and control, but now you introduce some external data, for example, for different type of the public cloud, public services. So that's why you are now need another skill set to your team, how to handle the public environment, just like your security environment. More than that is, because it's now it's an IT mixed hybrid world that you have something on the cloud, something in the remote side, something internal. So if you want to try to achieve the same real-time security visibility, it's very hard. In some kind of the research, we can find that nowadays people now have more than 70 different types of the tools combined all together in this new type of the collaboration world. So is there any solution to help to achieve that? Uh, actually, there's a team of people already suggest something to handle in that kind of environment. And this is the very famous one called Zero Trust and Security. Uh, actually, this is not new. Actually, in a long time ago, actually suggest that. And why this is famous is because Google actually implemented that internally. So this is actually the same slide you can download from the Google site. They share how they implement the Zero Trust to protect their user, even their mobile user, in the mobile environment, etc. But the point is, why Zero Trust? So Zero Trust has a very important concept comparing to the traditional internal security needs. In the legacy or traditional security, you build a lot of border to block the bad guy and let the good guy in, etc. In the Zero Trust world, you trust Zero means you don't trust anybody. You will allow the user, any user, come from any location at any time. And the user may access it to your data, access it to your equipment, access it to your network, and network traffic. So how can we maintain the security is the main theme of the zero trust security suggesting to you. And the key concepts to make it work is you will not just build in a type of the broader to block this kind of control control. And the other word is zero trust suggests you to have something called continuous monitoring. What we actually will do is for the managed user, managed devices, managed accesses, and managed application, we will do the real-time verifications for each different step. When the user comes from external side for the path, the accessing to our internal devices, downloading some data, all the whole chain of the procedure will be verified in real time to check whether it's a security okay, if it is breaching any guideline discretion and importance. Okay? So that's why search is not just another type of the equipment, it's not just buying a new type of the equipment, it's okay. You need to have a new concept is how can you maintain this kind of the continuous monitoring of the security. So let's read some report. Actually there's some survey has done this year. In early this year this is a report called 2020 Zero Trust Focus Report. You can wait for the details. But the main idea is you can see that um, around one third of the organization joined the questionnaire. Here is 